The first talk this afternoon is by Jochen Heimler from Hetlin, who's going to tell us about stability for C star fixed points on modular G experiments. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation to, to come here. So then, okay, so before I start, I should say that this is joint work in progress with Brian Collier. Let's go. And um, I'm a bit scared about talking about this, but it was the um, I mean, it was the only thing that I'm currently working on that fit of the team theme of the conference. And so and okay, so this is my idea to do this. So let me talk a bit about the motivation for, for me, because I think that maybe this is a case where the motivation for the three of us might be three different ones. And sort of uh, quite a while ago, Oscar, um, when I came into contact with Oscar, we tried to understand this, this problem for GLM. And so there, these moduli spaces turn out to be moduli spaces of chains or vector bundles. And the, they came up and sort of in Angela Hitchens' first approach to study the topology of the modular space of fixed bundles was to use the C star action and try to compute the cohomology by looking at the cohomology of the C star fixed bundle. And okay, so we, we tried to do this for GLN and then um, this also turned out to have some applications for to G bundles for real, so for UPQ. Um, Higgs bundles and joint work with, with Steve and Oscar and Peter Golden. And ever since, Oscar told me we should do this for G bundles. And I was, I mean, Oscar's enthusiasm needed a lot of repetitions because <laughs> I was kind of very scared about this because we, I mean, first of all, the combinatorics we found for G, GLN for vector bundles uh, was a bit messy to me. We used a lot of um, sort of some some results on smoothness were sort of used everywhere. Some H two vanishings were used everywhere. I was very scared about this, and then also the way these things are proved, there were kind of small miracles appearing. I mean, it's kind of um, sort of you. I maybe I should write it down, but I will come to this in, in a moment. There there are a lot of arguments that. So that you have these chains of vector bundles, and then, of course, the first in natural combinatorial invariant you can attach to it is well, the ranks. Okay, the ranks this just comes from Levy subgroups for subgroups, it's fine. But then you have the degrees, and there, sort of, well, you know, the sum of the degrees will be the degree of the vector bundle. And then you maybe you can put some ordering, but sort of to get a finite number of these components, you need to think a little bit. It's kind of there's infinitely many options, and which of these can be stable was a bit of thinking. And the typical way this goes is it's the simplest example of triple that Oscar knows very well. So you have a vector bundle E1 mapping to E2. And then you say, okay, suppose this, this map and, and the map between them. The typical argument for these bounds is well, suppose this map has full rank, suppose it's injective, then you have a natural sub bundle that gives you that cannot be destabilizing this gives you a bound and then you say wait a moment um how do i know that this map is generically um injective so actually i don't know <laughs> and then you say okay good it uh, doesn't matter then you say well then if it is not injective then i can still use the image and miraculously you find an even stronger bound so so the wrong bound you guessed for this maximal thing was actually the good one and this sort of arguments like this are dense in this article. And none of them is very difficult in some sense, but they are dense in this article. And I thought, well, no chance. Okay, so then a while ago, so Oscar sent me this article that just, I got the official composition version two days ago in the evening. So this, uh, this appeared online. So I got this from, in a joint work of his with um, Brian, Brian Colley, um, Olivier Picard, Garcia Parra, and Toledo, where they did some computation of 
of maximal components and found these analogs of Milner Wooding inequalities for G bundles. I will come to this at some point. And I, when he sent me this, I tried to understand this. And um, Oscar is a patient person, but um, <laughs> not so patient. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for Zoom calls, it's a, it's a, yeah, okay. Anyway, so there is another miracle occurring that there's there's some magic that in the in the proof in the proof of the argument. So they started with some some G mixed bundles, you will come to it. And then at some point they pull out SL2 triples in the Lie algebra. And I thought, okay, it seems to work. You can read the proof, but why? I, I just don't know why. And so I try to understand this, and this is what I want to, this is what's now starting this project. So what I want to explain today is sort of my view on how these SL2 triples, you could also find them if you would forget about all the differential geometry and just think about GIT, you would also find them. And it actually explains to you some of these miracles. It seems to explain all of these miracles that I mentioned. And somehow I was then happy because even if I look at just DLM, I finally have some something that I like much better than these arguments that I so and that's what I want to tell. So the only thing that I will really try to put as a proposition and thing will be a simple, very simple GIT lemma um, for, for you to enjoy at some point. But now let's get started. So that was my motivation. So let me try to say first what I want to talk about. Um, so, so let's start with a section in DC star fixed point. So I fix my curve of the complex number smooth projective curve. And well, I intentionally I don't want to think about small characteristics. And because I'm here in Madrid, I'd say speed star, I might occasionally <laughs> say, say GM, but uh, forgive me. <laughs> okay, so 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 C star fixed point. in a G exponent. Let me first recall what they what they are and what we are, we are talking about. So and I learned that for Higgs bundle, so so we fix G a reductive group. Ah yeah. Probably it's safe to assume it's well Officially, I would like to say it's either semi-simple or GLM, maybe, but you think of a reductive group. And I, I should also warn you then that in this talk, there will be sign issues. And <laughs> it comes because of different, the three authors, you have different kind of sign, sign that prevention. <laughs> well, I, I hope it's, oh, it's okay. So what's a, what's a G Higgs bundle? So I want to look at the moduli XG. So this should be the stack of G X bundles. And I learned that in the beginning of the week, you enjoyed uh, Ngo Bao Chao's point of view on this. This is sort of the same as to give you a map from the curve to the, so the G is the Lie algebra. G is the Lie algebra. You twist this by the canonical, we call omega. Divide by the adjoint action of your group and it's this maps over C. So maps into this. And so what this turns out to be is well, you take a there's a forgetfulness. The map is two point mod G, which is the BG of mush, which is the and G bundles. So this is just the stack of G torsos, G bundles. G torso, G bundle. And then you have your, your Higgs field. So phi, this will be a global section of the representation that you put here. So that's the of C with values in, well, you take the adjoint bundle and you twist it by the so that's a G expander. And good. I think that's that's what you enjoyed in the beginning of the week. That this 
way of thinking about Higgs bundles as maps into a classifying. So I hope that's that's useful. And so now I want to look at C star fixed points. So what what should be a C star fixed point? So I have a C star action on this XG. That's, well, I can't act on G bundle, so I just scale the, the section that I have. And this corresponds to the scaling action in the three algebra. And what should be a C star fixed point? Well, I would say that, um, uh -huh, so what's C star fixed point? So first, that uh, the star action on a vector space, the, on a vector bundle or vector space, this is the same as a grading. Grading. Yeah. Action on a vector space or on a vector bundle, you can just take the eigenspace where this gets this weight i, and you will get this direct sum com the composition. And I want to say what the same thing is for GX bundles. And I want to, to be, keep talking in this weird way. So, what would I like to say? I should say that the C. Yeah. Sorry, I want to say too many things at a time and forget half of this. So this is actually for those people, if there are audience, people in the audience who like algebraic stacks, it's a very nice example because usually if you want to think formally what a group acting on the stack is, it gives you a slight headache. <laughs> but here you have one example where you absolutely know this should be a group action and you should make your axiom so that this is a group action. We don't have to worry about it. So what I would like to say for such a C star fixed point, this should just be, well, it should be a point with the C star in the, in the automotive group, right? So it should be a map, so C star fixed point. This should be a map. A map from DC star into this place of fixed bubbles. So, G. That is a C star equivariant. So, over, over DC star. Where the C star action is also here on the on the on the V algebra. So it should be sort of C star equivariant. And again, you can um, either you're categorically minded, then you can figure out what it is, or you're not, then you just say, well, it's a fancy way to rewrite this. <laughs> and let's figure out what this is. So I do the same thing that I did here for G bundles, and probably you all know, but it's a I like the way of thinking about it like this. It would take the forgetful map to be bundles. And so now I could split this to mapping stage. And so what I should think about really what this is, is so what's, what's maps from BC star into BG? Well, that, um, that will give me a map from C star to C. So it will be a co-character, conjugacyclar co-character. I like to conjugacy. And then this, what does this give me? Well, it gives me a map from C star to G. And then the G bundle should have admit this C star as automorphism. So the structure group will be reduced to the centralizer of this. So if you give me such a such a lambda, so lambda defines a Levy subgroup and lambda, which in this article that I mentioned would be called G0. So this is the point. In G, such that the, the, it's in the centralizer of so the lambda T G lambda inverse G. So this is the, the, the Levy subgroup, and it will give you the B of the Levy subgroup. So this is just the analog of this, this thing that having a C star fixed point in band G 
so a bundle together with a C star inside of its automorphism group is the same as a bundle with a reduction to structure group 211. Yeah. And you, can, you get this co character comes as part of the datum. And sort of this co character that is part of the datum in this decomposition is really um, kind of hidden because it's hidden inside of the grading. Yeah, you could shift the grading and number them differently, get the same direct sum decomposition to correspond to different co characters. And so now, what is this map on top of this? Could it be that the map from B C star to your X bundle is selecting some other B C star inside, uh, which is not the, the one in use by the usual C star action on these bundles? Oh yeah, wait. So so this is why I put the, the C star on the top. Hmm. So I want this this C star act like this C star oh. acting here. So officially, I could, officially I should say, I take the quotient by the C star action and take maps over. DC stuff. That's the correct way of putting this. All right. And so now comes the first thing. So this will be so. So now, I mean, if you're a pathologist, you would just flip this and then you get here. Okay. So here the fixed points would be maps. So it will be a disjoint union from maps of your curve in B of the levy. <laughs> which again is just graded vector bundles and what's on top of this well on top of this you want to have this levy bundle and then the Higgs field in G that such that your automorphism cancels out the action of scaling here so that is it yeah so that so on top of this you will find the map from C to well aha uh -huh. so now we have to work a bit more so this levy also gives you a decomposition of the Lie algebra GI. So that is the weight space. Of, uh, of, of lambda acting on, on the Lie algebra. And now comes the first uh, uh, first time convention. So the official time convention is that we take o, omega one G times C star. And so this is saying that this is actually variant with respect to the C star action. Now I should confess that if I, if I do this computation um, and, and I'm very formal, I always end up finding G minus one here. <laughs> It's a convention, and I believe it comes from the fact that sort of, yeah, because we can choose a killing form, this G minus one and G G one, they are just the same, so it doesn't really matter. And I believe it's kind of hidden in the in the thing that in the so that this is the first place where there's a sign convention in come, which will affect all other signs. I apologize. I believe that it's kind of so. So let me give you the example to think about. For example, so a fixed point would be an element of the stack on the top left. That's yes. Right. So this is so these are the these are fixed points. And um, when you go to isomorphism classes, you get actual fixed points like these objects are. Right. Right. We we have to be careful. Um, so I will I will always um, yeah. right. So so for for now I did this computation with algebraic stacks and I really consider look at the moduli problem and I do not pass to isomorphism classes because once I pass to isomorphism classes mm -hmm. it's it's hard to even yeah yeah I mean yeah. So once I want to pass the isomorphism classes then I already have to introduce stability. So that I can get a nice space on which this acts, but yes. So it turns out that indeed. So once you have this thing, it will map to a fixed point of the moduli space. That is not hard to see. It's more effort to see that if you if you have a fixed point, there's actually some one fixed point living over it, and um, you already see this here. That for the um, for, for, 
if you just think of the moduli space of G bundles, so there's the, you, you identified all semi-stable, strictly semi-stable bundle with a polystable bundle. And the polystable bundle is the one that has the, that admits the C star action. But sort of, if you pick the wrong isomorphism class, it will not have the C star action. Right, so if you have a non-trivial extension of O with O, it will not have this extra C star action, but in the moduli space, it gives you a fixed point. So this relation between fixed points in the stack and the moduli space is slightly, you have to be slightly careful. But I think for all of these things concerning um, Simpson correspondence and so on, it's better to look at the moduli problem. Not to go to, to isomorphism classes first, but first go there. And that's the moduli problem we consider. And let me give you the example. So in this example, as you can see here, so in this example, so this will be, so here in this example, this will, what, what will this G1 be? So, so in this example, the Levy subgroup is just a block matrices. Some, and I hope I get the, the numbering more or less right. Then the G1 will correspond to B boxes. So this is G1. So this corresponds to homomorphisms from Ni to Ni minus one. Um, and um, sort of what this turns out, so what this space then will be is, well, you take your vector bundle that you gave yourself as a direct <laughs> of vector bundles, and then the phi will be a list of phi i's going from ei to ei minus one tensor with your canonical bundle. So this is what that means. It's quite, quite com complete. So now we have written written this as as maps into some 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 quotient stack. And so there's a fact that this part G1 is so this is a vector space, it's a vector space. This dense V0 orbit. And these are called free homogeneous vector spaces. They're all classified, but it's a particular example for us, only these examples will, will occur. There are a few others. So it's called pre homogeneous vector space. So this, um, so it has a one dense G orbit. And you see this in this example of matrices. If you are allowed to multiply from left and right with the others, you see that the rank is the only invariant and this gives you the, the orbit. But in this example, it's clear that this, but it is always the case and it's, yeah. but for these, it's not so hard to fuel. I have to know a little bit about rules. Okay, so these are dense orbits. So from the point of view <clears throat> that we have seen in many lectures, sort of there was always, I take this map into an affine quotient and then should look at the corresponding induced map to the GIT quotient. Now I have a dense orbit, so this GIT quotient will have two options. Either it's, it's well, if I take the stupid affine quotient, it will always be a point. I have a dense orbit, it's always a point, it's uninteresting. And what I want to convince you about is that this is not uninteresting because um, you have a little bit of playground with, with stability. Um, so next thing is to, so what I want to say is that, um, yeah, G0. Now, if you have an F9 GIT problem, um, well, you can take just the ring of invariance, but you can also do a GIT with respect to a line one on your F9 thing. So you can pick a character, and any character of G0 of your Levy group subgroup will give you a line bundle on the space, and you can do GIT with respect to this line one. Again, this sounds seems to be uninteresting because after all, we have an open orbit, so 
nothing good will ever come from it. But GIT gives you a hard aneurysm and filtration. So that's actually for if you tune your line model correctly, then so that's the, the main thing that I want to get across at some point. This will be the slammer. So that if I prove if I take the natural character of D0, then the orbit stratification will be a hard aneurysm and stratification in particular. All the points come with a canonical destabilizing subgroup. And this is sort of the, the interesting structure that will help us to study stability of these things. So this is where I want to get to. Uh -huh, so this was a re homogeneous vector space. So let me go now, let's get to stability. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah, okay, so this is near with me because now we, so I was surprised to find that in several talks, this mapping stack perspectives was, was, was found, appeared in, in Madrid. And so I thought, well, that's a good point to say that. that is, then I can also say stability in this way. So what? So stability for for G bundles, G H bundles, and R. Uh -huh. So I will call these. I forgot. So I will call these G zero, G one bundles, H bundles. Okay, so I want to know, recall what stability was. And so for me, usually, so one way to say this, so if given M, my moduli stacks and algebraic stack, so this was our G bundles and L align bundle on M, which is just, well, the functorial assignment of a line for every point in M or saying for any family, a line, canonical assignment of a line bundle on your family. So in our example, for us, so for us on bungee XG, the line bundle will usually be the deter what's called the determinant line bundle. And it's, it's fiber, so it's the determinant. So I, so the, the okay, so you probably know, but let me recall. So for, if you give me a G bundle on a curve, how do I produce line bundles out of it? Well, I take a representation, take the cohomology and take the determinant of the cohomology. So the alternating thing of the cohomology will still give me a line and that's what you do. So you just have to pick some representation my favorite representation is probably the adjoint representation. So you take the associated bundle for the D algebra um, and take the determinant and take its inverse. So, and if you want to do computations, which I will not do in, in this talk, it's often convenient to tend with this with, with the root of the canonical tool. You would, we will see one. It doesn't change. I mean, there's essentially, essentially, there's only one line bundle on on Bungie that gives you an interesting stability condition, and so it doesn't matter how you write it, and that's one way of writing it. And it's a bit yes. And then, so what is C in that case? My C is my curve. So I, no, oh, it, it, the, the 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 bundle. So you chose a particular bundle. So I, I give you what the for every you can read it in two ways. Oh, either either I give you the fiber at E, and it's this, or I tell you, whenever you give me a family of G bundles over some base, then this defines me um, the determinant of cohomology. The cohomology. This will be the computed as a complex of vector bundles on my base. So I can take the determinant of this complex and this will be this. And I take the inverse because the inverse is the one thing where I can both have some chance of producing sections, namely the differential in this complex 
gives me a section of the input. This is made such that the order characteristic of this thing is zero. So the differential head returns to be an order section. You see that when the Euler characteristic of this H star is the degree, which is plus the rank times one minus G. And so this one minus G will cancel with this tensor product. It's just the degree. Mm -hmm. So degree is zero. So then the Euler characteristic will be zero. So that's why I think it's not a choice. It's not the standard choice, but it's a, it doesn't matter for stability. And you say that the point, so point X and M is called L stable, semi stable. Yeah. For all maps of A1 mod C star with this moduli stack that happens to be to map one to X. F the property that if you take the pullback of your line bundle under this family, it gives you an C star actually variant line bundle on A1. On A1. The line bundle, all line bundles on A1 are trivial, so it's only the C star action that it's interesting. So if this weight is less than zero. That's the official GIT definition of stability. And again, there's a there's a sign convention that is already apparent in in, in GIT. So the sign convention. So here, this is the condition needed such that L has non-vanishing actions. On A1. So non zero, non identical. A section of A1 that are not identically zero. And there's a, and again, <clears throat> there's a secret sign convention because it depends on whether you think of the geometric bundle or the associated sheaf and so on. The only sign convention I know is that this is the condition you want to write. So because, well, from GIT, you would like to have sections of L that do not vanish at X. So if you have a section of L that doesn't vanish at X, it doesn't certainly that doesn't vanish if you pull it back to the smaller family. It doesn't vanish at X. So this line but not should have, at the very least have the chance to have a section, and that's the condition you put it. And there's only one normalization that's accepted for the C star action in A1, which is multiplication. And then you figure out. So that's the official GIT definition. So this is sometimes called now theta stability. So this thing is called theta, and this is called stability. But it's a re stacky reformulation of the stability condition for GIT. And it has the advantage that it, it works also for this bundle, which is not necessarily ample. So for example, if you take GL1, then the adjunct bundle is just a trivial bundle. So I just gave you the trivial bundle. So it doesn't give you, which is fine because I don't need a stability condition of the Jacobian. So it's a kind of a So now if I if I give you any for for G0. Uh, you one bundles can can find more line bundles on this modular stack. Namely, I e. Any character I from D zero to the star uh, defines and that DG to DC star. This is the classifying space of line bundles 
So, so the, by pullback, it gives you a line bundle. So it defines an app so a line bundle on this mapping string. And so we can vary, we can vary, vary stability by looking at now that. <clears throat> and Jack, this is so I will call this line bundle L chi, if you can call it. And there was L chi. And because the stability condition is only a, a numerical condition, there's a way that you could also define it for for any rational power or even any real power if you if you make a small effort. Um, and here kind of the if we choose. An invariant by linear form on my D algebra, as we call it B, then lambda itself, lambda defines, so lambda is a co character. So let's, let's see. So, I, so this also defines me a, a character in the dual space. So I can. Look at the Toledo character with the tall. So this is just given by taking the pair. So if I want to give you a full pair, a character, I could tell you what the pairing between with every character is. Then you just take the pairing with your map lambda, and I think you need to take a minus to get something positive. But again, this minus sign is related to the G1 or G1. So this gives me alternative versions of stability. So now I, I want to state this proposition that I said already before. Mm -hmm. And so this, this character appears in this article of well, the Toledo character. So in versions of this has been has been around for, for a long time. And for the authors of this, this paper, I mean the authors, so that's also your first guess of a character. But, um, if you have nothing around that, then but lambda, and you want to produce a character, that's the only choice that you have. So I was, I want to say the proposition. And this is the following. So given um, the lambda D G0 is the levy defined by lambda G1 as before. Um, the later character and team satisfies only, first of all, the the Hardener Zimmern stratification of uh, G1 so the, of the FIN GIT is, uh, is the orbit that it is. Uh, the is well, the stratification into the G zero orbit. So the, <clears throat> the, the irreducible components of the, the connected component, connected components of the other stratification are the G zero orbits. 
in particular, this means that the open orbit is either semi-stable or the least unstable orbit. And for you know, the second point, and the second point is that it, so because I also fixed a invariant by linear form, this, I don't know, well, to get a notion of stability, I only need a character. To get a, get a notion of hardener Simmons stratification, so there is this Kempf maximal destabilizing subgroup, and this uses an invariant by linear form. So this is that what's proven. And so then, because of this choice of the linear form, this tells me that there is a hardener Simmons stratification, and the hardener Simmons stratification is sort of for every e in G one. Um, but SHM be the maximal destabilizing um, subgroup so it's a co-character so I can view it as an element of the torus then uh, for E and um, we can write a lambda as h one half plus minus h is um, part of an SO2 triple. Yeah, for E. So for so because E is an element of the Lie algebra of G, so it's a nilpotent element. I can put it into an SL two triple. These are these SL two triples that appear in the article, and the way that they appear from the stability condition is that the two little character actually produce it from the central element by looking at the maximal destabilizing subgroup. And let me try to, if I, maybe it's nice to try to prove something. Let me try to get your argument because it's kind of, maybe. any question? So, um, Oh. The point is that this sort of maximal destabilizing SHM is characterized by maximizing well your B of well your character. This HM you maximize this quantity, and I mean because yeah, you cannot, unless you normalize, you cannot maximize this. So you have to maximize the quantity, and the SHM will be in the so will, it has to be be central in the in the centralizer. Of E, if E corresponds to, um, how do you say, um, to the associated graded piece of my in my Habermas and my structure. Um, uh, uh, so I say the minimizing element. In the Hardenberg-Simmons stratum. So first, first you assume that this, this, I mean, Hardenberg-Simmons stratum usually gives you an, an object with a filtration, and then the 
the associated graded is an element which has H SHN in the automorphism group. So this official proof would, if I don't use anything before, then I would say that, well, first I assume that I flow my E to the, to the thing that is the associated graded. There it will be then. And then I prove afterwards that actually the, the only orbit was fixed. There's actually nothing flowing into this thing. That's the precision orbit. Technical doesn't matter. But from this formula, you see that this means IE minus SHN is the orthogonal projection projection of minus lambda onto the centralizer, onto the maximal torus, onto the torus of the centralizer E and G. Yeah, and you can write this minus lambda as um, lambda as minus SHN plus something that I will call H half. And what you know about this, so this will, so this lambda acts with weight one on E because it acted with weight one on the whole of G1. So this is the, this is in the centralizer. So this is in the centralizer of E. So this will act with, with weight one on, on E. Um, and uh, so now, you know, if you look at the, I think I want to, to say this, yeah, so and if, if uh, H is in, in SL2 triple, then this H is in particular obtained as a commutator of G. And so it will be, so then this means that this H will be orthogonal to this HN, which is in the centralizer. Right, so if I, because the bilinear form on, on G satisfies that I can take the commutator to the other side. So if this SHN is in the centralizer of E, it will be orthogonal to this H. Right, and this is uh, this is how you find that the SL2 triple thing actually gives you the correct thing. And so the, in the SL2 triple, you always have to have weight two. And so that's the way this one over two shows up. Essentially, the only observation in And this has, has some funny consequences, which are all already in this article. But I find this the, and I mean, and my, much of this has been known, is known for these pre homogeneous vector spaces, but it has these funny consequences that, um, so. Or <laughs> As I said, there are many things that are known for pre homogeneous vector spaces. That, also, I think this lemma might also be true for pre homogeneous vector spaces. But, um, but um, well, there's a corollary. And then it's so from this, you can read off that the, the first thing is that this. Um, mm. the, so the open orbit. Is a uh, tornado semi stable if and only if um, the stabilizer in G, G0 of this E general is reductive. And this is equivalent to saying that there exists um, an invariant. Uh, and a times i t action variant function from g one to one. 
And this is called a relative invariant. Such that the pre image of A1 minus zero is the open orbit. <clears throat> And this is now kind of comes from GIT because GIT says that well, if this is a semi, wants to be a semi stable point, then the stabilizer has to be a reductive group. And if I'm the GIT semi stable, then I know some power of my line bundle will have, will have a section <clears throat> that's actually varying with respect to the character. So that's your function. And because all other points are unstable, this function will vanish at all other points. And so this is why the open orbit is exactly the pre image. Right? Again, Oscar tells me, but it's in the article, but I find it nice to see that it just comes from the article. Yeah, but, uh, and it also tells you, and it also tells you that for all other orbits, orbits, you get, you get a Levy subgroup. You get a, get a, get stability. Or, um, or another or a smaller group with respect to some shift to a shift of minus lambda by the character that comes from the hard version definition. Also GIT. So the GAT said, tells me also that the, in the GAT setup, I always get a parabolic that's contract to a to some stratum that's as a levy action. And this will the, if I shift my stability condition by the maximal destabilizing, it will get something semi-stable with respect to this levy action. And so this is again comes from, from GIT, and also this group appears in this article. You can compute exactly what it is. But the, the good thing is that this invariant form, so this is a character. So this tells me that whenever um, whenever you get give me um, a G0 G bundle where the section where, where your Higgs field generically lies in the open orbit. It will give me a non vanishing section of this associated line bundle. In particular, this associated line bundle will have to have positive degree. And again, this GIT thing that, well, this positivity condition only gets worse if you go to smaller orbits. And this will explain this sort of if the rank is maximal, then blah, blah, blah. And if not, some miracle happens. So this comes from this GIT thing, which I like somehow. Even for chains, I like it. But this gives you a bound. So this gives a bound of this. Yeah. Okay. So now I said this. This is Toledo character. Five minutes. Mm. So well. Um, yes. So. Uh -huh. And there's another remark that I want to make. So for any any um, X bar G G zero G one X bar I I will be generically. So the, at the generic, so generically. Um, so suppose maybe like that. By generic is in the open orbit of uh, G one. Then I get a get a reduction of structured group. 
in the parabolic defined by my maximal destabilizing plus a non non vanishing section of the associated um, bundle. Of some associated line bundle. I know, um, you know, you can kind of, yeah, I want to go, give you one kind of small. So this this G zero bundle, I can think of it as a parabolic. So this G zero was a levy inside of a parabolic in G, and now this Adara <coughs> Simon thing gives me a finer parabolic in G zero, and then you can do a computation. There's a problem there. So the weight. So if e comma phi semi stable, then you know that zero is the bigger replacement to the weight of the line bundle. And e with respect to lambda. And you can compute this as a weight for this parabolic reduction. And you can, so this lambda, we recall this was h half plus minus hn. Um, so you can take this apart. Minus out. That's when this thing is respect to this H of. And now from this part, because stability applies to all parabolics, in particular also to this parabolic, this will tell you that this will also be less or equal to zero. So this thing will be positive. And so this will be bigger equal to this weight. All that. Um, and here you can compute this has to do this is computed in terms of this associated line by line of the degree of the associated line by line. And this equation, if you Unravel all the definitions gives you this Milner Wood equality that, that Oscar likes a lot. Yeah, so this gives you a bound on what these semi stable bundles can be. And so again, this GIT tells you well, this explains why, well, if this thing is not in the generic orbit, the equation only gets worse. And also tells you that if this, if you want to have maximal thing, maximal possibility, then this has to vanish and can. So get, get this nice description of these moduli spaces for the extreme of parameters. And yeah, maybe I should stop there. This will only explains this thing. But um, so the one thing that I that I that I think that we have now found is that the other thing that was bothering us was the smoothness. And so for Higgs bundles, it happened that there was a so the stability condition for Higgs bundles, well, there you have. So on the moduli stack of Higgs bundles, this is singular exactly at those points that have extra automorphisms. So this is, comes from the self-duality that this H2 is dual to some H0. If you do the same thing for this G0, G1 bundles, you will also, um, yeah, you will end up 
doing a very similar computation. And it seems to tell us that um, got the deformation here, so maybe I should just and, and just say it in which if you do the same argument for Higgs bundles for this D0 G1 Higgs bundles, it also tells you that if you want to have an extra automorphism, it gives you a particular section of the associated G minus one bundle. You can run the same argument and it will tell you that um, if you vary your stability condition just an epsilon in the direction of this Toledo character, you cannot have such automorphisms. So the H0 will vanish and therefore the H2 of the deformation problem will vanish so that you will get smooth stacks. So the moduli spaces can still be singular, but the stacks will be smooth. Mm -hmm. And so there's some hope that you can actually understand these now for um, try to do this variation of GIT once you go an epsilon in the right direction. And for UPQ, we managed to go back to the zero wall. So maybe there's hope. Yeah, so that's why I think now there's hope for this. So thank you. Yeah. So in your future, can you somehow see the analogous type one 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 six phase? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I should have said that. Yes, <laughs> it is type one 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 fixed points. Um, these are those where the where the, the lambda is generic, such that the Levy subgroup is actually a torus, and there sort of then you always have these one dimensional representations, and these invariants are just given by the tensor product of these one dimensional representations. So it's just saying that these compositions are non-zero. And it's, I mean, this regular condition is really a, a beautiful condition. I mean, I had some, I mean, this, what, what's also interesting is, is other one, 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 one is sort of reduced everything to a choice. So this is good and understandable. And so something is nice if you have some, some rank, then the rank goes up and then the rank goes down to the same number. Then you, then this invariant will be, be the determinant of the composition. The only, I mean, the only thing that you can think of is determinants. So that's the rank of this composition. And so this is a, a kind of a funny, funny invariant because it's sort of, well, on, it wouldn't make sense on the individual vector spaces, but only on their composition. But again, this redu canonical reduction gives you a reduction generically to a levy. And this levy chooses the two parabolics that we would use for chains to define our stability conditions. So that you can sort of you can trade take this. So it's it's nice in this chain picture. You can sort of every statement you can reinterpret in a, in a nice way there. This uh, proposition here. Okay, you have the pre-homogeneous vector space G zero G one, yes. and at some point you said, oh, this GAT maybe is true for any pre-homogeneous vector space. Uh, what do you mean by that? Because in particular, this, you know, is building upon the S of the triples and things that are just specific to this parabolic homogeneous vector space and thing or G1 or whatever, any time the gradient, but for a general. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, okay, so I, it has question. been, I, I think it's an interesting question and I, I think there is, um, okay, it's, I have to admit it's, it has been, so there's a very nice exposition of these pre homogeneous vector spaces in a, in a, in a mm -hmm. long lecture notes or an article by, by my Manivel. Which, and I mean, he has lots of, I mean, all the general structures that we know about pre homogeneous vector spaces are there. And I'm, I'm, I kind of forget, I mean, there, there's one key ingredient in this article of Manivel that allows me to conclude that it's the strata array are really the orbits, that there's nothing flowing in. This was in, computed in terms of Lie algebras, and I'm not exactly sure whether he proves this in a very, where, whether he has kind of a variant of this for primogenous vector spaces or not. I'm not sure. And sort of there's, um, yeah, there's some, it's, I think it's an interesting question. I mean, I never cared about because these are the only ones that appear. And for now, I just want to look at these. But it's just that you always tell me I should look at the others as well. <laughs> It's well needed. 
Okay, well, let's. I think uh, you had a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you, do you have also some description of the cohomology of these uh, Sistara? No, I mean, yes, cohomology? I mean, this is what Oscar would love to do, right? <laughs> I mean, the good thing is that if the smoothness argument is true, then sort of once you get away from Higgs, at least you have smooth moduli spaces, so there's some hope. Also, if you look at this argument, if your thing is not regular, then you see what the topology is of the largest limit that you can find. So that it's kind of funny. So you, you see, for example, in this, in this, um, in, the, in this chain business, there, there were sort of by accident, we found some line and that we found interesting and that has sometimes you can, it has an infinite length where you can, you can go this, to the stability parameter to infinity and you will always have a modular space and sometimes it stops. And this kind of explains why, because it tells you that if you tune the stability condition, if you take this tensor product, then for a parabolic, well, the determinant will be always the same, but the, the the thing that comes just from this affine quotient, this will get larger. So if you're unstable generically, eventually you everybody will get unstable. So that's why th this will end at some point. And at the maximal thing, you have to lie in the open orbit everywhere. And so there you get a reduction of structure group and an associated levy. And so you can describe this just in the way that you like to describe these maximal things as extensions of vector bundles over some space of vector bundles. This has a similar description as Levy and then some projective bundle and there you can compute. Wall crossing seems to be a nightmare. In, in the type of one case, do you get like products of symmetric products or anything more interesting? Uh, I haven't checked. I'm, I'm, I'm scared because there's sort of the, yeah, I, I haven't checked. I, I haven't checked. In this case, do you still have the word crossing phenomenon type one one? No? no, I don't think so. Oh. No, 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 no. When you see that this was the case where the generic orbit is, is, is very stable, and so then, then this you can tune this parameter, it doesn't give you anything everywhere, so there you can go forever. And so there you should have an explicit description in terms of products of curves and quotients by symmetric group or maybe the way group goes up somewhere. I, I, have, I should check before I say something stupid. Right. Well, maybe we will let you have a cup of coffee before you yes. check it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.